Michael Starson, Wayne Wilson. Congratulations on your amazing performance on stage, Mr. Universe, runner-up Mr. Universe. Uh, what are your initial thoughts? You know, now, we've had a couple of days to process it all. Um, Mike, we'll start with you. How are you feeling? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm still in shock, actually, because this is a dream I had since I was 15 years old. And it haven't really settled in yet. So, it took, took me only 38 years to get there. <laughs> but uh, it feels great. And Wayne, I know you were saying you know, that this is uh, something you, you've been working towards, getting that, that statue and getting that sort of top yeah, placing yeah. around the... Yeah, I've, I've had... Uh, I'm going back to the earlier days of the WFF, but I've had two runner-ups, so 506. Yeah. Uh, you know, the standard gets better every year. I've had five third places, but you know, realistically in the over 50s, there's no height, there's no weight, it's, and I understand because the numbers drop a bit. So um, that's as, you know, that's a great placing for me. It's as good as, it, as good as it gets. And I was, it's interesting when you compete. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure we put ourselves under, but um, you're just totally, you know, elated, relieved, happy, and just that sense of achievement. It's um, really good. Yeah. So I feel good about it and. Probably for the first time ever, like it's not going to get better than that for me. I'm 55 this year, so um, I've got no real plans of the future. I might be sitting on the judges' table, who knows? But um, yeah, don't quote me on that because I have been known to say that before. But um, yeah, it was fantastic. It was wonderful to share the stage with Mike. And um, I, you know, as soon as he took his top off, I knew I expected him to win. But we had been communicating back and forward, so we years. do quite, yeah, for three years now. Where did you guys um, meet? Africa. Africa. Okay, yeah. So 2015. Yeah, and I think we'd spoken prior to that, yeah, like on I, Facebook. I think and that. I contacted yeah. Wayne yeah. Yeah. before Africa. Just yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and this was our perfect scenario. We we had the one-two plan. So uh, I, I never stand on stage and expect that I'm going to place high or win. Or so I was actually by my reaction quite sort of shocked, and it was because again when that's that last third person to get called out, I'm used to. Russia, Hungary, Lithuania, and when it was Australia, I'm like, wow, that's that's cool, that's cool. Yeah. Mike, what's it like sharing the stage with a friend? Alios. What, what, what's it like to share the stage with a friend? It's amazing because we we, we like we spoke for three years and we spoke before this show and even when we went on stage this time, we said, I wonder how we're gonna go, how we're gonna end, and uh, pretty much what we thought gonna end it ended and uh, it's a wonderful thing I mean he's a guy good friend <laughs> yeah for sure yeah, yeah, yeah so you make look you make wonderful friends great relationships yeah. and you know if you let the ego out of a bit as you should at our age it's more about enjoyment and friendship and um, you know it's, of course it's good to place as high as that because yeah, that's yeah. icing on the cake but it was um, you know we were backstage chatting and talking and of course I lose perspective of what I look like so when we've got 10 you know uh, guys in various conditions backstage it was a good lineup but um, you know I've said to Mike backstage I'm like, well, what do you think I mean because Again, I've noticed that there was only top three, and, and I've worked. It's just been a thing that Mike's known. I've never won a statue at a show before after all these years, and I just want. I wanted one of those trophies. <laughs> Sounds pretty juvenile at my age, but um, I'm like, am I going to make the top three? So um, that was cool. That but, was, but that at was the same tremendous. Time, we're yeah. both 55 years old, and you got to be a little bit realistic, of course. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some skin a little bit loose some places, but we're not 25. I don't know, between the two of you, there's not much loose skin anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've seen, yeah, we, yeah, we see some people uh, yeah. back home and overseas that, yeah, the, yeah, the, the older they get, it's just, it's yeah. hard on their bodies. But you know, well, look, people think you two, that's, that's people, people think it's view. actually like easy, but. I found as I've trained like in blocks, 30, 35 changes, 35, 40 changes, but once you get over 50, man, it's not the same. I did the yeah. same things this year as I did last year, nothing bloody happened, nothing worked. I'm like, what? It's, your body really, really starts to change. So, yeah. Yeah. And I have to say that yeah. I competed for five decades, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, and now it's the fence. Yeah. And I'm actually reached my peak at this show yeah, yeah, yeah. after 38 years, and 
it gives you tears in your eyes. Yeah, well, that, it is. I think that's uh, that's good for younger competitors to know that. Yeah. You know, just because they don't necessarily get what they want when they're 25, exactly. or maybe even 30 or 35. Exactly. Um, you know, there, there's still goals to be to be reached in bodybuilding because you, know, you may not hit your peak or your stride until you're 45 or even 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, maybe even 60. <laughs> <laughs> I my wife's not watching this. We, uh, we, might, we might have to introduce an over 60 class to the universe. So the only thing that Mike and I let ourselves down on is uh, there was a few big grunts and groans coming from the masters and we just couldn't match them, mate. <laughs> As you know, Daniel, it was yeah. quite entertaining. Yeah, I think there's, a, there's an old story Arnold Schwarzenegger used to tell about giving someone some advice yes. about screaming on stage yeah. and then having to carry the guy Took off. It literally. He said yeah, it's I very know. easy to give the wrong advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, all right. Uh, what do you? What, yeah, what's left for you here in here in Rio? Yeah. A bit of sightseeing, sitting on the beach. For me now, it's just to make my wife very happy because she been suffering quite a bit with my mood swings, <laughs> not taking care of the house and so forth, and helping her out. So I want her to have a great time. So I'm heading back. This evening, there's three or four people on my flight, but it's, it's been a great time and it's the right timing for me. I miss my family and yeah. they're not with me, so we got a beautiful life on the sunny Gold Coast in Queensland. And you know, we had an amazing day Sunday for, for the people watching uh, Danny, Sue, and I suppose Daniel, and quite a few people. It's the best thing we've done at the team 46 people. Yeah. You know, we went out to um, Christ the Redeemer, Sugarloaf Mountain, Ipanema, Copacabana, that, that was an amazing day. Okay. And it's funny because you're doing that one day and the day before it's the show, the show, the show, but the, the next day it's like it was a year ago, it was just, yeah. that was incredible. So it's actually been, you know, I've done 15 universes, it's right up there, I was a favourite of South Africa, I've never had a bad one, yeah. but this, as a, as a, it was just a great team. Yeah with um, just really, really nice people and you know, I made a concerted effort to get try and spend time with everyone and hear everyone's story and not too big, not too small, just right. It was it was a really, really good yeah. and, and, I, and I feel like a adopted Aussie now after <laughs> <laughs> three years. Yeah, uh, I think we, sure. we've heard that a few times and yeah. every time the Australian team goes overseas to sort of yeah, adopt people into the yeah. into the yeah. squad. Yeah, it, so. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, good. it's good to have that sense of community in, uh, amongst the competitors. Yeah, um, is, I know yeah. that you know we've had uh, a lot of Australians and, and South Africans and Koreans, and they've become very good friends over the yep. years. And obviously, yeah. The, yeah, the two of you are a great example of, the, of that sort of friendship that you can make um, as part of the, the you know, being a part of bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. um, any advice that you'd give to, to younger competitors or even you know guys your own age who may be thinking about stepping on stage for the first time? It's never too late. Yeah. Just, just st stick to your plan. Plan will change, of course, but if you want something, strive for it. Yeah. If you have a dream, yeah. try to live it. And I I enjoy it. Do what makes you happy. And if it's not making you happy, don't do it. And uh, look, our, our scene's changed a lot. It, it used to be, you know, five, ten years before you could step on stage of training, that was bodybuilding with the new classes, people getting like pro cards and that. and and so forth so quickly, they they tend to think in 12 months they're going to win a universe and, and it sort of shatters them when it doesn't happen. But, you know, in some aspects, like I spoke to one girl and I said, well, you know, you've come third, you've come second. What if you had a one this year? What are you going to do next year? When you've got a goal in there, you've got something to work towards. And that's the main thing, having yeah. that something like that in the back of your mind. Yeah. And uh, look, I will say this, the, 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 the class that just absolutely blew me away, the bikini was awesome. But the guys in the Bermuda divisions and stuff like yeah. that, their physiques were unbelievable. Every yeah. one of them was sliced, wide shoulders, little waist. And look, that's classes come in there. Going back probably, you know, five, six, seven years ago, they actually would have been in what was known as fitness or performance because they, you know, that was an amazing standard, you know, to really see that's a world event. You know, so yeah. the, the standard was like really high, and when you get that opportunity to compete with people from all over the world, uh, the, the prestige has really grown with the WFF. I think it's something, unless you've travelled, you don't really get in Australia. And, um, you know, I, I hear a lot of stuff, of, you know, I hope you don't mind me saying about NABRA and so yeah. forth in Australia. Um, 
because the WFF has got that big, I really feel people's choices have changed and they're opting to do that, you know, and there's some cases here where they could have gone to Russia or come here and they're realising, you know, um, that it's, it's uh, very, very, look, Daria holds both titles, um, but the prestige of the WFF's really grown, so it's giving people that option. So um, and unless you've sort of experienced it overseas, you don't really see that as much, but the standard is, it's crazy. Yeah, it just gets better every year. And I like the challenge, to call it challenge class. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. That shortest guy there, I mean, he looked like... Yeah, Luciano he's a uh, big, Cruz, big yeah. guy. Yeah. I was, I was looking at his legs going, wow, this he's yeah, clearly Whoa. <laughs> working very hard. But and, I think and, and that, that it, that's a, I mean, so many people out there with handicapped or whatever you want to call it, they have a chance to do this as we do. That's a cool thing. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Uh, so we're heading back to the USA next year, back to uh, Mike's Neck of the Woods mm -hmm. for the World Championships. Yep. Wayne, do you think you'll be on the muscle tour with us? Oh, I'll definitely be there. I mean, even this year, I, I know I told Alex I'd do the uh, New Zealand show, but yeah. I can pretty comfortably say that's not going to happen. But I, I will go and support it. And um, so next year, uh, uh, Definitely Singapore, because yep. um, for the first time ever, my wife and son will be able to come. They're on holidays, so. But I'm not too sure I won't be sitting on the judging panel at that one. But again, it, it gives you a, you know, to be involved in that side of it gives you another outlet. You know, I've got the suntan on, and you know, surely uh, after the weekend, still a lot of people need that. So, um, yeah, I, mate, I'm, I don't see myself not not being involved in this. Uh, you know, I've either. grown. I, I've grown. I look at the photos of Graham and I now, and uh, you know, well, you were young, you're still young, but yeah. um, I've, I've gr we've grown old together on the muscle tour. I'll, yeah. like, I'll, I'll keep doing it. It's a, it's a privilege, and it's a real honour to, to be included, and yeah, it's part of my life. Yeah. And I will not compete at that world, but I will be there to help Lauren Powers yeah. to try to make it as a good show as can be. Well, that's what we need. We need you know, everyone's. Uh, yeah, the amount of Judge. support. Oh, well, yeah, judging, but, but just even you know the people supporting uh, promoters. You know, a lot of people think that one promoter does everything themselves and they're some extraordinaire miracle worker, but they're not because you build a community around you, and that's yeah, you know, that's what it's all about. Support. But saying I won't be there competing next to you doesn't say I won't compete against somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, even though I'm probably my wife, I don't. Yeah. But I think she changed my mind already. We'll, 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 let's, let's not give too much away. We'll, no. uh, we'll yeah, keep a few secrets. So, all right, gentlemen, look, thank you very much. Congratulations again. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you on the Muscle Tour again very soon. Yes. Thank you, Dave.